their starting lineup, they have just three players that are juniors or seniors, six underclassmen. First pitch, a strike, and we are underway at 4.04 p.m. Central Time. Wind shifting around a little bit today. We've seen it blowing straight out to left. We've seen it blowing across the diamond left to right. And right now, it looks like it's blowing pretty much straight out. So you want to keep the ball down if you're Lauren Skirman. As you mentioned, the youth of this Oklahoma State roster, there was a lot of uncertainty going into this year with some coaching changes, a lot of new faces on this roster after a big year last year. And this young talent has stepped up. Pular grounds out. And a quick first out for Iowa State as Carly Spellhog takes it herself at first base. Youth. Certainly a part of it, but transfers as well. Poulard, a McNeese transfer. Caroline Wong on deck, transferred in from Liberty. And this is the freshman, Rosie Davis. Took over for an All-American at second base in Rachel Becker. And could argue for her status on an All-American team this year. Yeah, the numbers these young players are putting up as well as the transfers very very impressive and it's beautiful play out in right field there by Deanna Tiana Poole makes the catch in foul territory for the second out of the inning and we'll take a look at it here as Noah mentioned wind blowing left to right carrying that ball towards the fence and Poole able to stay on her feet and make the reaching grab in right so two down for Caroline Wong. Perhaps the most formidable in an Oklahoma State lineup full of threats. They don't lead the league in batting average at Oklahoma State, but they are third in the Big 12 in slugging percentage as a team. They hit for extra bases pretty frequently, and Wong a big part of that. Gets a hold of this one, but foul. And quickly, nothing in two is Lauren Skirman unfazed by the top of this lineup. And Wong this year already 122 at bats. She's seen the ball very, very well. 15 home runs in those 122 at bats. Weakly hit foul. Wong lucky to get a piece of that and stay alive. For Skirman so far, a great start for Iowa State. She's this Iowa State pitching staff, they're going to allow hitters to put the ball in play, and that's not a bad thing. She's going to let her defense work, and so far the defense has shut it down for her. Here's a ground ball to third, gobbled up by Miner for a quick one, two, three inning by Iowa State. It's the Cowgirls nothing. Iowa State coming Allen Ranchez and Poole that went three straight home runs on Tuesday. An interesting point, talking with coach Kenny Gajewski this morning, he says his pitching staff is not very much a, a strikeout staff. Between Kilfoyle and Rosenberry, though, 150 strikeouts on the year. Right. So to say that you're not much of a strikeout team, but then for two pitchers to combine for 150 is absolutely amazing. But he's right. I mean, they strike out just under six batters every seven innings. Good for fourth in the Big 12. It's good numbers, but it's nothing eye-popping. Kilfoyle delivers a strike on the outside corner. She's struck out 86 batters in 100 innings this season. Again, very good, but not eye-popping numbers. For Iowa State here, absolutely crucial to make something happen early. They've been falling behind early in games. They had a great stop defensively in the top of the first inning, so need to come out offensively here, get some base runners on, and set the tone for the weekend. And if you're Iowa State, it's, it's been your top three hitters that have been doing almost all your damage this season statistically and, and certainly how it's worked out. There's a drop third strike. Ochoa out at first from Wong to Godwin. So it's, you know, if you don't get those top three hitters active in the first inning and on the base paths, you got to wait 
until the third or fourth for them to come around again. And so, you know, you're in a tied ball game right now. You want to get your best hitters going. Yeah, and, and the biggest threat for Iowa State up right now with Angelina Allen at the plate. We saw her at bat on Tuesday against DePaul, hit her 11th home run of the season. She is dangerous, absolutely dangerous, swinging from the left side, has a long swing, and is very aggressive at the plate. A little bit out in front there as Kilfoyle changed the speeds to start. Kilfoyle, one of the higher velocity arms on this Oklahoma State staff. She's not scared to throw inside on hitters. A lot of pitchers with speed tend to work a little bit more outside. She's not scared to go inside at the hands of hitters and she works down in the zone. And she's ahead of Allen one and two. Iowa State hitters so far just a little bit behind the stuff she's throwing hard and then that off speed's coming in very low. I'd like her to go back to the off speed here. What do you think? I would like it. Instead, she stays with the hard stuff. Allen rolls over it and is retired thanks to Rosie Davis. Five batters in this game, all out so far. Alicia Ranchez comes to bat. And Ranchez on Tuesday, part of that back-to-back-to-back -back -back sequence for Iowa State with the home runs against DePaul. She's swinging a good bat, and it's gotten a lot hotter as of late, which is exactly what Iowa State needs as you talk about this top of this lineup trying to do the damage. First righty of the day for Iowa State. It's a ground ball to short. Bloodworth across the diamond to retire the side. Six up, six down goes the first inning to the second next. Make it five, ultimately, despite not a lot of carryover from those previous teams. And I tell you what, if you are another team in the Big 12 looking at that graphic, should scare you. No kidding. 16 freshmen and sophomores on the squad. They are 34 and 6 on the season. Absolutely amazing. And you think about the Big 12 this year and how competitive it is as Carly Godwin stands in. Faces a 1-1 count with Oklahoma, Texas, and Oklahoma State. All They've all been top 10 teams this season. Right now, they're all top five. There's a fly ball out towards foul territory and right, and Poole can't quite get there this time. Next year, two of those top five teams migrate to the SEC. And if you're Oklahoma State, you're feeling really good about the future of your softball team and the future of the conference. Yeah, I mean, you're feeling great about it, but also you have some really good squads coming in with the conference True. realignment. And I mean, there's some teams on the southwest side of the country that would are excited to come play this competition. Godwin gets a hold of it, but just foul up the third baseline. Carly Godwin, a big part of this youth movement, a freshman, cleanup hitter. For Oklahoma State, nine doubles, eight long balls this year, 31 driven in. And hitting just about 350. One, two. This time pulls it a little bit weaker, but still foul. And Skirman, so far for Iowa State, doing a great job attacking the zone. She knows these Oklahoma State hitters are aggressive. They're going to attack what she's throwing them and really doing a great job. She's staying right around the strike zone, but hasn't thrown anything too much over the plate yet. Here's a pop up right side, foul ground. Spellhog has room. Lexi McDonald to the plate, the left-handed hitter for Oklahoma State. Right fielder in today's contest, a sophomore. Has three homers this year, does McDonald, the sophomore from Silo. Two of them in the same game. 
April 6th was Lexi McDonald Day. <laughs> She's looking for another, another day like that one just a week later. The wind certainly would uh, be in her favor here. It's not, not quite as aggressive of gusting winds as we saw last weekend in central Iowa, but. There's rarely a game it's not a factor, the weather exactly. here at Cyclone Sports yep. Complex. So, and this weekend's going to be the exact same. So, as you now, of course, we pan out there <laughs> and there's no wind at all, but uh, strong wind blowing out today, just be, wind gusts. Tomorrow, that wind's actually going to change the direction, be blowing straight in. One, two, misses outside. Yeah, so if you want your home runs, you better get them today. That's what you're saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. Right. <laughs> Skirman continuing to work ahead on these Oklahoma State hitters. There's a weak ball foul, chopped straight into the ground. That was one thing that we talked about with Coach Pinkerton. You know, his, his freshman pitchers... Skirman and, and Aziza Rodriguez have been thrust into more action than was potentially in the script this year because of the early injury to say a Swain. And this 2-2 two -two fouled off. One thing he talked about was, you know, they get into trouble early and then they get themselves out of it by coming back and attacking. But it's hard to... to come back from behind in the count. And so get ahead. Getting ahead is going to be the key to having success in the circle. And that has certainly been the case for Skirman through the first four batters today. Yeah. Your arsenal is just so much bigger when you're ahead in the count. You're not, then not scared to miss the plate by a ball outside or a ball high. It gives you so many more options and allows you to I mean, just put you in a situation to try and get the hitter to chase something that's your best stuff. Ground ball up first. It just rolls foul. Spellhog couldn't get there when it was still on the chalk. And this right side so far has been very busy. It was fair for quite a little bit, but you could tell it was going foul. Hard to tell from that angle whether it still was, but the home plate umpire had a good view. This one definitely fair ball, and Nosen can't make the play. Lexi McDonald in safely at first base on what is likely an error on the second baseman. And Nosen here as she's attacking that ball just loses her footing. You'd like to see your second baseman in that situation square the ball up a little bit more instead of trying to play it on the side. You have so much more body control if you're going straight at the ball instead of playing off to the side of it. It is an error on Nosen, her first of the year. And that is the first base runner for either team today. McDonald aboard with one out for Michaela Wark. And for Iowa State right now, it's absolutely critical to lock it down on defense. Realistically, you think, okay, it's one error, not the end of the world, we'll bounce back. But historically, over the last few weeks for Iowa State, one error has kind of led to a second, to a third. So need to shut it down. Don't let one turn into two to turn into three. Skirman, for her part, is not phased by the base runner, still attacking the hitters. And ahead in the count again. This one low. Well blocked by Maddie Knowles. Work the designated player today, a red shirt sophomore. This one just misses the inside corner, maybe a touch high. And I like the pitch selection there on a 2-2 count, going right in at the hands, trying to jam 
work. Cop foul and into the seats. Iowa State here. Skirman has been throwing a lot of these hitters. Like I said, weak contact opportunity here for a double play up the middle. You'll see your middle infielders really communicating, playing a little bit deeper and closer to the bag at second. Another payoff. Swing and a miss, strike three. First strikeout of the day for Lauren Skirman. And a big second out for Iowa State. And this right here, huge pitch for Skirman with a full count attacking right on the outside corner of the zone. Not shying away from anything. Katie Lott, the sophomore from Cypress, Texas. And she takes inside. Oklahoma State, not much of a threat to run on the bases this year, but Iowa State, Maddie Knowles behind the plate is someone who's done a really nice job so far this season in shutting it down. Oklahoma State steals at the lowest percentage in the Big 12. 79% success rate on stolen bases. 2-0 pitch is hit on the ground to the right side, just past the diving glove of Nosen. It's a single for Katie Lott. And Oklahoma State with two runners on and two outs. Katie Lott here just going opposite field, working on top of the ball, getting fully extended. You have Nosen who's squeezing the middle just a little bit, unable to make it over in the 3-4 hole. You like to see a hitter willing to go opposite field as Megan Bloodworth takes high. Especially, you know, later in the count, if you're down 0-2, you want to shorten it up and go the other way. But if you see a pitch that you can push to right field, take advantage, whether it's 0-2 or in that case 2-0. You'll notice that a lot with great hitting teams. They're not extending their hands away from their bodies. They're keeping their hands inside the ball as you mentioned, shorten up, keep that swing nice and short. The pitcher is going to supply the power for you. Let her be your power source. You just get your hands to the ball and drive through it. Bloodworth flies this one to right field. Step back or two for Poole, who makes the catch. And the inning comes to an end. A one out error, a two out single, both stranded for Oklahoma State. Butter against then number three, Oklahoma State. And that's been the thing for the Cowgirls is they've dropped one that frankly they shouldn't have to Iowa State each of the last two years. We were talking about with Coach Gajewski earlier today and he said if we want to compete with Oklahoma, which we can at the top of the Big 12 this year, you can't drop one in Ames. And he, he's exactly right in, in what he was saying and that's part of it, having this young roster making sure that you're showing up to play regardless of who the opponent is day in day out it should be your game against your top rivalry you treat it as such um so this oklahoma state team and for iowa state last year that win i mean one of the biggest wins in program history against a top three team huge momentum shifter and iowa state went on to have a really strong end of the season after after that game Deanna Poole facing a 2-2 count. But it's an Iowa State team that has plenty of players that remember that series, remember that game. Against an Oklahoma State team that you saw two-thirds of their team has never played in Ames before. The freshmen and sophomores, obviously the sophomores played against Iowa State in Stillwater last year, but and that makes a difference. Also with travel troubles yesterday, just weather around the country, they weren't able to get a practice in yesterday. Typically you like to get to a field and be able to get on the field, feel the surface and
get yourself familiar with where you're playing prior to your first game. It's now full on Tiana Poole as the Cyclones look for their first base runner. And a rare walk for Lexi Kilfoyle as Poole draws the base. Just walk number 18 in inning number 102 for Kilfoyle this year. And that pitch by Kilfo Kilfoyle very, very close to the zone. Really could have gone either way, but a great eye by Poole to get herself on base. Spellhog the senior from the Quad Cities. Shows bunt and pops it back to the screen. Poole was running on the play. And obviously a situation Iowa State would love to just move a base runner. That's exactly what they're looking to do. But with the speed of Spellhog, an opportunity in this situation to get herself on base as well. She takes just outside. Did not square that time. It's one where if you push it to the right side, with the second baseman, Davis, playing so far away from first, you might be able to sneak your way onto first. 1-1, one, one, a strike. And with the runner on, Oklahoma State may be in a defensive formation where you're actually going to have Killfoil cover the right side of the sure. infield, have your first baseman stay back. Now every infielder is going to be back with two strikes. But it almost looks like that's an approach they were going with yeah. there with how far over the second baseman is towards the base. Swing and a miss, strike three. Two strikeouts now for Kilfoyle as she follows up the walk with the punch out. Kilfoyle continues to work low and inside. You see that drop ball just falling out from underneath Spillhog. Ashley Miner stands in. Talked about how good the top four in the Iowa State order is. If you look at the bottom five, Miner probably the best total hitter of the rest of them in terms of combination of average and power. Miner goes with a split grip a little bit on the bat, looks to just control the bat through the zone. Does a good job there waiting on the off-speed pitch. Ideally early in the count, you want to see your hitters lay off that pitch, but able to get to it, she was. Yeah, you, you mentioned the split grip. You can see it there, a gap between the left hand on the bottom of the bat and the right hand on top. Poole takes second on a pitch that dropped out of the glove of Caroline Wong. I think that's probably a passed ball. If it is, Caroline Wong is one of the best defensive catcher and offense, one of the best catchers <laughs> all around that you could you could say here. Yeah, that drop ball just completely drops out from underneath her. That is a tough pitch to receive. So now a runner in scoring position for Iowa State as they look to strike first. Miner takes a strike. Kilfoil not shying away from that inside corner. Really important for the bottom half of this Iowa State lineup. Make sure they're timing the ball out front. Miner holds up on a pitch that misses low and outside and runs the count full. Ball four. Walk, strikeout, walk in this inning so far for Lexi Kilfoyle, who very much pitches to contact. Very rare inning here for Kilfoyle, and such an opportunity for Iowa State. You have runners on in the second inning with only one out. You need to take advantage of this opportunity. 
Isabel Nosen takes strike one. And in Oklahoma State's dugout right now, the message to Kilfoyle is attack the plate. Just go after them, let your defense work. Your defense can't guard strikeouts, but they also can't guard walks. That's exactly what's happened so far this inning. Inside that time, two for 16 is Nosen on the year. Has not started a ton of games for Iowa State. And Kilfoyle is pretty much done the same too. And it started at 170. Cut that in half. <laughs> it was great to start with, even better now. <laughs> Strike on the outside corner to Nosen. Committed her first error in the top of the second inning. No damage done. Swing and a miss, strike three. Kilfoyle there, back-to-back -back pitches going outside on Nosen, and that one just off the plate getting her to chase. You'll see this pitch living almost in the left-handed batter's box over there. Nosen unable to lay off. Now Coach Pinkerton out with his lineup card. He's going to make an early adjustment. It's Maddie Knowles' spot in the order. And it will instead B. The suspense is building. <laughs> I think the number ends in three. Yeah, Paige, Paige Nakashima. Just 12 at bats this season for Nakashima. The sophomore from Hawaii takes a strike. And Coach Pinkerton here just looking at the opportunity for RBIs, trying to see if Iowa State can't make something happen here early in this ballgame. One and one now on the right-handed hitter. Foil one strike away from stranding the two walks. Really good cut there by Nakashima, just a little bit behind a, you talk about the speed of Killfoil. That's a hard thing to catch up with when you're coming in in a pinch hitting situation. The one, two. Just inside. Foul and Nakashima stays alive. Kilfoyle right now not scared to go to that off-speed pitch. That pitch, ton of movement on it, moving away from Nakashima. Great job on her part to keep her hands back in order to foul it off. 2-2. Two -two. Low and outside, she went back to the hard stuff. Walk, strikeout. Walk, strikeout. So far in this second inning, now another three ball count for Lexi Kilfoyle, but also another two strike count. The payoff. Swing and a foul tip dropped by Wong. So it will stay three and two. And runners on that pitch should have been moving. Tiana Poole there at second. Ashley Miner almost caught up with her. Three, two count, you wanna see your runners going. Great job here by Nakashima, just getting a piece of it. And this one hit weakly to third. Poulard will touch her own base and retire the side. 
Cyclones threaten in less than 150 losses. He's been to four straight College World Series. Coach Gajewski's just been such a staple leading this program, has done a phenomenal job over the years, but has attributed a lot of his success to those around him, which is really cool. Talking about bringing in folks to help with the mental side of the game, bringing in folks to help with the leadership side of the game. And he, he, he joked earlier, He's like, you know, the coach that probably knows the least on the entire coaching staff <laughs> is me. Yeah. And, and that's a great thing to have when you're a head coach, people around you who can make you better. Claire Tim, the sophomore, down in the count one and two. Swing and a miss. Two strikeouts now for Skirman. Skirman, to start this game, has just attacked the zone. She has a job, and she is getting it done. You see the rise ball on the outside corner. Fantastic job by Lauren Skirman so far for Iowa State. Oklahoma State sends its top of the order back to the dish. Jillian Poulard. Thought about the bunt. Instead takes outside. Yeah, Kayeski, he said he might be the worst coach on the staff, but he's the best people person. And that's your job as a head coach, right? A, a manager is what they call him in professional baseball. You're managing people. You're managing your staff. Pouillard there with a big cut off of Skirman. So not bunting. Not bunting on that one. <laughs> Grounded out her first time. Another huge hack. Just barely gets a piece of it. She's behind one and two. Skirman has gotten to that one and two count on most of these hitters. It's either been 0-2 or 1-2 on most of them. Pretty rare to see a lot of these Oklahoma State hitters get behind that early in counts. They're not a team that draws a lot of walks. This one laced out to center field Ochoa right there. 115 walks on the season for Oklahoma State that ranks seventh out of 10 Big 12 teams. Definitely a team looking to attack and Iowa State, for the most part, aside from one error, so far has shut it down. Rosie Davis flew out to foul territory her first time up. And chops one up the middle. Backhand play, Nosen. Quick throw to first, not in time, as Spellhog couldn't get it out of the dirt. I think that probably goes down as an infield single. I would say so, very, very difficult play up the middle. Great work with the leather by Nosen, making the hop and throw back. Yeah, that would have been a tough, tough dig. Even if it was dug, she might have been safe. It is an infield single, and Caroline Wong stands in. Ground ball right to Spellhog. And the inning is over. A two out single stranded. Boyle, the graduate student who is, like I said, maybe on her way to first team All America honors, certainly on her way to first team All Big 12 honors, going against a freshman right hander with an ERA of five and a half coming in. So you certainly expected great pitching from the folks in black and orange. But that's something that Iowa State has struggled with this year. Yeah, and Skirman's just done an outstanding job. As I mentioned, she's getting ahead on hitters. And, I mean, when you're ahead on hitters, your arsenal opens up so much. Olivia Wardlow, weak contact to the left side. And Oklahoma State's five-person infield gets the job done. This is Claire Tim had come in from center field, but it was Megan Bloodworth who made the play. Defensively, if you know that slap is coming, why not do everything in your power to defend it? 
Can't do it in baseball anymore. Can in softball. You can in softball. <laughs> Add that one to the tally of why softball is the better sport. Exactly. Ochoa looking for a little bit of revenge this at bat. Kill, this was one of Kilfoyle's strikeout victims her first time up. Ochoa might need to shorten up that swing just a tiny bit. See yourself through contact. Instead, she's behind in the count, nothing and two. Kilfoyle looking for strikeout number four. But it's instead a line out as Rosie Davis makes the catch. Good piece of hitting there by Ochoa, just right at Davis at second base. Ochoa finds that drop ball, gets her bat underneath it, able to make solid contact. And again, a great defensive play. She had a couple words of advice for Angelina Allen as the junior makes her way to the batter's box. There's a foul ball. So, Ali, you leave the batter's box against Lexi Kilfoyle. You go to your teammate that's about to stand in, and you say. Really, I'm just telling her what I saw pitch-wise. And for Ochoa, she's going to say, hey, I saw two outside. That third pitch, she came with a drop ball that I lined out. So you're going to talk about pitch sequence, and um, there she's going outside just like she did to Ochoa in that first couple of pitches. So with those left-handed hitters, they're seeing very similar pitch sequences from Kilfoyle. One and one on Allen, who grounded out to the right side her first time up. This time grounds to the pitcher. Kilfoyle defends her position and sets down the Cyclones in order. Dang. Middle third of the Oklahoma State order begins with Carly Godwin, who flies this one foul to the right side. A souvenir for one fan or Perhaps a free candy bar. Looks like he's going to keep it for a souvenir for this point. I would. <laughs> I think you're supposed to turn it in and get a candy bar, but a ball with the Big 12 logo. There you go. Yeah. They just turn into batting practice balls anyway, right? <laughs> if you turn them in. They might put him back in the game. Shallow center field, long run Ochoa, but she makes the catch. And Skirman continuing to just attack these Oklahoma State bats. That time inducing the pop up, Ochoa had a long way to run. But she's got such quickness. She just reads the ball very, very well. Yeah. She makes it look easy, which I mean, that's one of the best compliments you can get as a defensive player in softball is when you make it look easy, you're doing something right. She does exactly that. Lauren Skirman opens the at-bat to Lexi McDonald with an off-speed pitch to get ahead. That is something that she's continuing to do well, getting ahead in the count, throwing early strikes. Coach Pinkerton said that would be the key. And it has been today. Another 0-2 count. Again, her pitch selection is wide open now. She can attack off the zone, and she can attack above the zone or below the zone <laughs> in that situation. <laughs> She's typically been attacking above the zone. Well, that's so much of pitching, right, is, okay, they expect me to go above the zone here because that's what I've been doing, so let me do something else. I'm just glad I'm not up to bat because I would have been <laughs> sitting on a rise ball there. <laughs> This one chopped back over the glove of Skirman and into center field. A base hit for McDonald, who is aboard for the second time. Reached on error her first trip. So she's one for two today. And that one there just outside of Skirman's reach up above. And I mean, as a hitter, that's exactly what you're looking to do right now. Not a lot of momentum for either team at the plate. Just get your bat on the ball. See if you can extend through something hit a hard ground ball or a line drive. 
This one drops below the zone to Michaela Wark. Wark was Skirman's first strikeout victim. That one above the zone. Haven't seen a lot of 2-0 counts on either side today. A couple of walks for Kilfoyle, none yet for Skirman, who has really been ahead of hitters for most of the day. That one finds the outside corner. And both pitchers right now, it's easy to say when you're throwing this well, but very composed in the circle is both pitchers. For both of these teams, very, very impressive for Skirman. Just a freshman to have this composure against the number five team in the country. Iowa State's got to walk away from this one. I know we're only mid-game, but very impressed with Skirman's performance. And she's back in this count from 2-0 to 2-2. Here it comes. Here she went with the rise ball. Work there, able to lay off of it. Work keeps a very low stance, very low, very powerful stance. Payoff. Popped up shallow left. Allen doesn't have to move much to make the play. Two down for Katie Lott. Katie Lott, one of these Oklahoma State hitters who does have a hit on the day, looking for her second. What Oklahoma State needs at this point is to string those hits together. Three hits so far today, one in the second, one in the third, one in the fourth. It's all about timely hitting. And for Oklahoma State this season, it's been all about power hitting, and they've had three singles. Especially on a day-to-day, -day, we have the wind blowing out for either team. We really have not seen any extra base hits. For me, well, from Iowa State, we haven't seen any hits yet, but no extra base hits on this game. And Skirman once again an 0-2 count against an Oklahoma State hitter. This one flied out to left. Allen back, but has room in front of the warning track to retire the side. The win That's at the end of seasons. Whoops. And that one slipped right out of Kilfoyle's hand. I think that's ball one. That is ball one. So, I'll tell you what, as a pitcher, as a pitcher at any level, it's going to happen. You see it in the youth game, you see it in the high school game, and there you go, you see it in the college game. So you laugh and you move on. And the way that Kilfoyle's pitching today, she can afford a couple of those. Although she has walked a pair. She's struck out three and has not allowed a hit. As Iowa State sends three, four, and five to the dish in the fourth inning, Ranch has turns on one, but can't keep it in play. That right there, Ranch is able to get around on the ball. That's the closest thing Iowa State has had to a hit so far. Made some really solid contact on that pitch. Ranch has grounded out to her fellow shortstop. Her first time up. One, two. Line drive at her fellow shortstop. Megan Bloodworth makes the play. I would say Rancha is her next at bat. That's a, that's a bat we want to keep an eye on. She's made some really solid contact in the foul ball in the line drive there. Starting to see it a lot better. First pitch to Poole. She's out in front of the off speed. As a pitcher, such a bold move going with the off speed on the first pitch of an at bat knowing that this hitter is an aggressive hitter and is probably going to swing. Good time to go backwards. Pool fouls this one off. And 
Kilfoyle quickly ahead, 0-2. And, and Poole is the furthest in Iowa State base runner has got. She did get walked in her at last at bat, made it to second base. Oklahoma State has also not seen a batter pass second. I was going to say that's the furthest anyone has gotten in this game. That pitch misses low and outside. And Poole still battling here down one and two. This one too far in. Kilfoyle walked Poole and then walked Ashley Miner later in the same inning. Since then, has retired six in a row. They get seven. Foul tip strike three for Kilfoyle's fourth strikeout of the day. And Kilfoyle, Kilfoyle starting this at bat with an off speed, ending this at bat with an off speed. That off speed drop, a very dangerous pitch as you notice how off balance Poole got there. Base is empty, two down for Carly Spellhog. Ground ball to the shortstop side, Bloodworth. Throws out Spellhog and retires the side. Both these pitchers are getting the job done. With the wind blowing out here in Ames, such a rare day. Hats off to each of these pitchers. Megan Bloodworth, one of the flyout victims. May well fly out here again. And yep. Skirman there, great pitch coming up at the hands, jamming your hitter, let your defense work. She's in the fifth inning of a masterpiece here. Claire Tim, the last batter that Skirman struck out way back in the third. Pitch misses high. Oklahoma State has three hits in this game, a single in each of the last three innings. They're a team that really does rely on their extra base, hitting 62 home runs this year is good for second in the Big 12. This one fouled off. And both teams now about to get back to the top of their order for a third time. You have to imagine once these hitters are up for a third time against this pitching staff. You would imagine we're going to start seeing a few more hits in this game. Now two and one on Tim. The other thing, Oklahoma State has some formidable hitters on their bench. You think of Talon Edwards, the freshman All-American. She got the day off today, but if they need a late spark, she can come in and hit. This one poked to left field and down, a base hit. Claire Tim goes the other way. And in the book, that's a base hit just like any other base hit, but good job on Skirbin. Again, soft contact by Oklahoma State. You'll see Tim here just going opposite field, poking that thing over Miner at third base. They don't call him the cow pokes for nothing. Here's <laughs> the poke. Jillian Poulard is 0 for 2 today. Takes a strike. And Poulard did show bunt, and she did swing away in her at last at bat. So she is a threat here with a runner on base if they just want to move the runners over. You're at the point where you kind of want to manufacture a run as this one is flown to center field, easily playable for Ochoa. Oklahoma State opts not to go that route here. Two outs with a runner on first for Rosie Davis. Heading into a very dangerous part here of the Oklahoma State lineup. You have Davis hitting 358 on the year, Wong 385 on the year, your next two hitters up, so Skirman Dialing it in, going off speed to start this at bat. Yeah, you really want to end this inning now. If you're Lauren Skirmit, 
and Iowa State, you do not want to allow the heart of the Oklahoma State order to come up with runners on base, even if it is with two outs in the inning. Wong is dangerous, <laughs> so you want to end the inning here. You are exactly correct. Wong, the three-hitter, Godwin, the four-hitter, have a combined 70 RBIs. Skirman working further up in the zone, throwing a rise ball there with the 1-1 count. Rare for her to be behind in the count. <laughs> Tends to come right back here. She does. Beautifully painted on the outside corner. And it's two and two on the freshman second baseman, Rosie Davis, one for two today. Skirman's done a really good job with that pitch sequence. Going from that rise ball she didn't chase, she attacks the outside of the zone right after it. Another poke that's just down in left field. So two singles in the same inning for Oklahoma State, something they haven't yet done today. And that brings up the ever dangerous Caroline Wong. And Iowa State needs to be really smart here on how you approach Wong. Wong today, ground ball to the third baseman and ground ball to the first baseman, but she is a very dangerous hitter at the plate, especially with runners on base. 39 RBIs on the year. And that ground out to first was a pretty hard hit ball. Takes a strike there. And Skirman not shying away from the challenge at all right here. That one low and outside. Caroline Wong did earn player of the week this most recent week. Hit a cool 778 for the week. Here's a chopper up the middle, gloved by Ranchez, and she's able to get back to the second base bag. Has won all of their Big 12 series. They're the only team to do that. If they keep that up, they can win this conference. The and top of the Big 12 this year, closer than we've seen it in as long as I can remember. I mean, four teams at the top that are really competing for truly the first place spot. We'll see if Kansas can stay competitive as they start to play some of the more top tier teams in the conference, but they certainly belong in that conversation with those other top five teams in the country of Texas, Oklahoma, and Oklahoma State. Ashley Miner in for Iowa State as the Cyclones still look for their first hit against Lexi Kilfoyle. Allie, were you surprised by the poll this week that put Texas number one? Yeah, there's so there's several polls in, in college softball, and some of those polls were seeing Texas at number one, and one of them I saw Duke at number one. Um, so. Yes, I am surprised. And, and the reason I am surprised, I, I get it. They won two out of three matchup against Oklahoma. But Oklahoma sometimes just needs one loss in their record to light a fire. Miner cranks one deep to center and gone. <laughs> Ashley Miner, a solo home run. The no hitter and shutout gone with one swing and the lead to Iowa State. Look at this cut by Miner, the split grip. She is fast. She attacks that ball right center field in Iowa State up on number five, Oklahoma State. That's how quickly the game of softball can change. Both defenses, both pitchers have been excellent in this game, but Oklahoma State who you think, boy, they're on the brink of a breakthrough with five hits in the last four innings. They just can't quite string them together. And Iowa State says, well, you don't need to string them together <laughs> if you just get them over the center field fence. 
Isabel Nosen hits one weekly up first. Godwin steps on her own bag for out number one. I think if you're Oklahoma State, you're a little bit upset with where you're at in the rankings. Um, I, I mean, number five is great. That you know, they're certainly getting a lot of respect. But you look at their resume. You look at the teams they've beaten, and the teams that have beaten them, with which has happened just six times. And I don't know if Texas's resume with also six losses, two of them to Oklahoma State, is necessarily better than the Cowgirls at this point. Yeah, I mean, there's no other way to put that. Oklahoma State, such a solid team. Great play there at shortstop to go deep in the hole was Bloodworth, and what a dig by Godwin. Yeah, really good play by the shortstop Bloodworth, but that dig by Godwin, perhaps more of the highlight on that play. Solo home run by Ashley Miner to lead off this inning. Iowa State's only hit of the day. And Olivia Wardlow swings through the first pitch. With and once two again, outs the here, bases. Oklahoma State will go with a fifth infielder. So they're going two outfielders. There is no right fielder right now. Instead, they're going in a rover position right at second base. You'll see on the screen there. And it's weekly to shortstop. Bloodworth not in time. And regardless of how many infielders there are, Wardlow able to beat out the slap. You'll see the five infielders there. Wardlow gets the soft contact. Bloodworth played it perfectly, but sometimes the speed of the runner is too much. Malaysia Ochoa 0 for 2 today, as most hitters in the Iowa State lineup is. She gets a hold of this one out to left field, but it stays in the yard for Katie Lott, and the inning is over. Nothing Iowa State lead. Carly Godwin takes strike one, 0 for 2 today. It's a ground ball to third. Miner stops it, picks it up, and throws out Godwin, who's the only cowgirl to start every game this season. She's 0 for 3 today as Lexi McDonald stands in. And Godwin in that at bat. She did make hard contact last time to Ochoa in center field. You have McDonald coming up now, who did have a single her last at bat, and Work, who flew out to left. So maybe the coaches saw three hitters coming up that had made some solid contact and wanted to make the change. And there's a strike on the outside corner to McDonald, who technically reached in the second inning. It doesn't count for her on base percentage. Got on via error. And then singled in the fourth. Takes a hard swing there and comes up empty. And so far, Ralston picking up right where Skirman left off, uh, working ahead of these Oklahoma State hitters. Nothing in two on McDonald. She checks her swing and did not go, says third base umpire Riley Cobb. Ralston there, that rise ball got away from her a little bit. Almost got the swing call as McDonald turned her entire body towards that rise ball. The one, two. A hair low. Long foul and McDonald stays alive. Oklahoma State looking for an answer. And Oklahoma State prior to the sixth inning had the whole team in a huddle. And they were 
I mean, you have to imagine talking about different approaches they were going to take at the plate and in the field. Entire team was in on that huddle, though, having a long conversation. Yeah, you've got to be happy with the pitching, with the defense if you're Oklahoma State. It really is the offense today. And they've been led by pitching and defense this season, certainly, but their hitters are no slouches. Yeah, interesting day to have just a very stagnant offense. This one skied to center. Ochoa into the left center gap to make the catch for the second out of the inning. Very rare for this team to, to just go stale offensively, and that's exactly what has happened against this young yeah, Iowa State pitching staff. Tia Warsop will hit for Oklahoma State in for Michaela Wark, who is 0 for 2. And Warsop takes a strike. Warsop this season, a 360 hitter. All singles. Slapper, she's got speed. They're looking to get some speed on the bases here. Fouls this one off and is quickly behind in the count, 0 and 2. Originally from Northampton, England. 2 fouled off. Her, Texas, her family moved to Texas when she was four years old, so she spent a lot of time stateside. But still plays for Great Britain internationally. 0 2. Line drive left field, but it loops in the air long enough for Allen to make the catch and retire the side. Cyclones lead it 1-0. Lexi Kilfoyle out for her sixth inning of work. And right now on the hook for what would be just her third loss of the season. Allen, a pair of ground outs today. Stairs at a strike. Allen right now currently on a 10-game hit streak, so a lot on the line with this at bat. You have to think with a hitter like her, she's going to square something up here. Stays alive with a pitch she probably could have let go, but gets the bat to the softball, fouls it off. O2. Line drive, left center field, it's down. And extra bases for Angelina Allen. She keeps her hitting streak alive with a opposite field double. As I just mentioned, you are not gonna keep a hitter like her quiet an entire game. She comes into this at bat with two ground balls. She takes this one left center field and she knows as soon as it's off her bat, she's going for two. Extends her hitting streak now to 10. And here's Alicia Ranchez. Takes strike one. Ranchez also 0 for 2. Kind of a similar situation to Allen. You don't expect a, a hitter like her to be held down for a whole game. And with a runner in scoring position and nobody out, Iowa State is looking for some insurance. And Ranch has her last at bat had some great contact just right at Bloodworth at shortstop. So you have to think here she's learning from her at bats as she goes. Runner in scoring position now for the dangerous hitter. Cyclones were held hitless through the first four innings. But a solo home run to lead off the fifth, a single later in the inning, now a double by Allen. And Iowa State closing the gap in the hits column. They already have the lead in the one that matters, the runs column. The fifth year shortstop awaits and takes low.
Two and two. Swing and a foul ball. Kilfoyle there going with that drop ball outside. Ranch has doing a really good job. Able to get her bat underneath it in order to foul it off. Another 2-2 pitch. Swing and a foul tip, strike three. Five strikeouts for Kilfoyle in inning number six. Brings up Tiana Poole. And Kilfoyle with that drop ball. Ranch is unable to keep her eyes down on it. And Kilfoyle, I mean, one home run on the day. Other than that, she has shut this offense down. There's a strike on the inner edge. Almost a shrug of the shoulders from Poole after that pitch. What am I supposed to do with it? It's a great pitch. Same spot. Same half check swing from Poole. She says, well, I know it's a strike, but. Anytime as a pitcher you're getting a reaction from the hitter, you're going right back yep. to it. <laughs> I mean, there is no reason not to. Same result two times in a row. And it hits the batter. And she tried. So those first two pitches were right inside on pool. She tried to inch it just a little bit closer in off the plate. It's this season. The left-handed hitter from Chino Hills, California, takes a pitch low and outside. It's... Her, her stats this year on the hitting side, kind of interesting reading. Four hits in 25 at-bats, so a 160 batting average. But two of those are extra base hits, a double and a homer. And she also has drawn 13 walks. So she gets on base almost half the time, 447 on base percentage. And she works herself ahead in the count here, 2-0. For Iowa State, very important to point out who is on deck. So you have Ashley Miner on deck right now, the difference maker in this game. Johnson takes a strike. Kilfoyle has not walked more than two batters in a game all season. She's already walked two today back in the second inning. The 2-1 to Johnson is fouled off. And great job there by Kilfoyle. She knows she's down in the count. She attacks two strikes right on the inside corner of the plate, jamming Johnson on both of them. That pitch misses low and outside. Off speed from Kilfoyle that Looked like it might drift its way into the zone. Instead, the count runs full on Johnson. The payoff. Outside ball four. And Lexi Kilfoyle has now walked a season high three batters. And Iowa State will run for Johnson. They'll re-enter Spellhog at first base. And smart move there. You have one of the best base runners in the country in Spellhawk. Get her back on the base. Now you have the dangerous hitter of the game, Ashley Miner, coming to the plate for Iowa State. An opportunity here to break this thing open in the sixth. Solo home run for Ashley Miner last time up. Her sixth of the year. She is the one run on the scoreboard. Oklahoma State defense here, you have to in this situation. In the bottom of the sixth, their defense is playing very shallow. Outfield at a normal depth. Infielders, though, all in front of the base path, trying to cut down any opportunity Iowa State may have in the infield. And Miner is hit by the pitch. She drives in another run. And Iowa State doubles its advantage. As Miner reached.
Here's a weak grounder up first foul. Interesting approach here by Morris. You have, you're coming in in a pinch hitting situation. The hitter before you just got drilled by a pitch and she came out swinging away at that first pitch. Would have liked to see a little bit more patience at the plate against Kilfoyle. There's a strike and it's nothing in two. Now no room for patience. Now you gotta swing. <laughs> Bases loaded, one out. Iowa State ahead of number five Oklahoma State, two to nothing. And that pitch misses low and outside. Morris completely changing up her approach there, showing slap. For a lot of hitters, it, your head is turned a little bit to more towards the pitcher. That's a great way for some hitters to shorten up. Their back can move just a little bit faster if they're attacking at the ball. Swing and a miss, strike three. Kilfoyle comes back with a strikeout, a huge second out as Oklahoma State tries to keep itself in this game, heading to the last inning. Demaris once again showing slap. Kilfoyle staying off the plate outside, catches Morris chasing. And this is Maddie Knoll's spot in the order. She has already exited and re-entered, so she will not be able to re-enter here as she is replaced again, this time by Abby Gunter. Iowa State truly using everybody in this game. We've seen a two pinch hitters and technically two pinch runners in this inning, although one of the pinch runners was just re-entering her spot in the batting order. And this is the third pinch hitter now in the inning. And the fourth straight spot in the order that is a substitution in this frame. Bases loaded, two outs. Can the Cyclones capitalize again? Gunter, a senior, 0 for 1 this season, 0 for 2 last season. Three hits as a sophomore, the 1-1, one -one. lined foul. And a good cut there by Gunter, a little bit behind it right now. The speed of Kilfoyle, very evident against these pinch hitters coming in for Gunter right now. Catch up with the speed, catch it out front. See what you can make happen. Here's the one-two. Called, strike three. Three strikeouts in the inning for Lexi Kilfoyle, but the Cyclones scratch across. Oklahoma State has won 17 of the last 20 games between these two teams. The Cyclones have won one in each of the last two years. They're trying to make it two games in a row as Katie Lott stands in Oklahoma State. It's now or never. This one smacked out towards right field. Poole makes the catch. Iowa State two outs away from pulling the upset in game one. Will be a pinch hitter for Oklahoma State as Macy Graff comes in. For Oklahoma State here, just absolutely crucial. Get runners on base. You want to see your hitters right here driving through the middle of the ball. You saw a lot just getting just underneath it, driving that one into right field. Iowa State went to the lefties on inch on its bench last inning. Oklahoma State doing the same here. Macy Graff, three hits in 18 at bats this year takes outside. Iowa State this game, Lauren Skirman, five outstanding innings from her in the circle, and Jaden Ralston has came in in a situation, a tough situation to come in. You, you see your teammate give up five scoreless, and, and you come in, and she has completely locked it down just like Skirman did. Five innings for Skirman, five hits, no runs, no walks, two strikeouts. 
She's in line for the win. Ralston trying to pick up a six out save. She's got four of those outs. Looking for number five here. Blind foul. Iowa State upset then number three, Oklahoma State in Stillwater last season. Cowgirls come into this one at number five in the country. And the Cyclones have the lead with one out in the seventh. Line drive caught. Ashley Miner, the hero on offense, flashes the leather as well. Ashley Miner, what a game she has had. And you'll see here just ready for it. Very hard hit there for Oklahoma State, but Miner ready for it. One out away. Claire Tim is one for two today. Singled her last time up in the fifth inning. Jaden Ralston has set down all five batters she has faced today. Pours in strike one. And Iowa's, or excuse me, Oklahoma State here, an opportunity to flip this to the top of their lineup. For Tim right now, just get yourself on base, get it to Poolard, get it to Davis, get it to Wong. Fouled off. The Cyclones a strike away from shutting out Oklahoma State. And opening the series with an upset victory and a top five win. Tim has struck out once today and singled. The 0-2 from Ralston. Check swing. She went! Six up, six down.